U.S. President-elect Joe Biden addressed the nation regarding his electoral victory and his administration program. In Bolivia, the inauguration of Socialist President Luis Arce is taking place this morning and marks the restoration of constitutionality. And Guinea's Constitutional Court on Saturday declared incumbent Alpha Conde had been re-elected for a third term as president at the age of 82. Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is From the South. U.S. President-elect Joe Biden addressed the nation regarding his electoral victory and his administration program. Biden said he is proud of the diverse coalition of both voters and political parties during the 2020 election. The Democrat said he couldn't have gotten to where he is without the votes of black Americans and said the African-American community stood up again for me. He also promised to join forces with scientists in order to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic, a move that overrules his predecessor policies towards the health crisis. None of both Kamala Harris or Biden mentioned Republican candidate Donald Trump in their statements. The new president and vice president addressed the nation from Biden's hometown, Wilmington, and were accompanied by a crowd that held banners and shouted their names. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. And as news emerged that Biden had won the election, crowds poured into the streets of Washington and other cities in celebration. In the capital, the sound of car horns filled the streets with hundreds gathering downtown, whooping, laughing, and clapping in Black Lives Matter Plaza near the White House. Across the city, people came out onto porches, toasting the Biden victory with champagne and tequila, many of them with the attention on their phones as they shared the news. People poured into the streets of New York as well, yelling and clapping from balconies and banging on pans. In Philadelphia, the biggest city in Pennsylvania, the state where Biden was born and which sealed his electoral college victory, celebrations erupted outside the convention center where votes had been counted. And leaders from around the world reacted to Biden's victory. On Twitter, the president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, congratulated the U.S. people and the president-elect Biden with his vice president, Harris, on the victory. Former Brazilian president Luis Inácio Lula da Silva tweeted, the world breathes relieved with Biden's victory. The people of the U.S. spoke out against Trumpism and everything it represents. Republican and former Florida Governor Jeb Bush sent his congratulations to Biden and stated that now was the time to heal deep wounds and that many are counting on Biden to lead the way. As well, the Vice President of Argentina, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, congratulated Biden and also VP-elect Harris for becoming the first woman of color, the first woman as, as well, and the daughter of migrants to be elected for the position. Former CARICOM Chair and Barbados Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley has expressed optimism in future relations with the United States as she congratulated Biden and Harris on their victory at the polls. America has spoken and the world is inspired. The people and government of Barbados warmly congratulate President-elect Joe Biden and his Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, the first woman and person of color to hold that position. I am sure that we in the Caribbean will look forward with optimism to working with the new administration to confront a number of global issues, from the awful pandemic to the climate crisis which we face to the pursuit of racial justice. There is much work for the world to do if we are to lift up our people across the globe to fight these issues that know no boundaries but require character and leadership to defeat them. Well done, President-elect Joe Biden. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister has also congratulated Biden and Harris on their election victory. Dr. Keith Rowley said the Caribbean is filled with pride since Harris is the daughter of a Jamaican father. He added that he looks forward to strengthening economic and security ties with Washington. 
And Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness also praised the U.S. President and Vice President-elect. He said he is proud that Kamala Harris, the first female to become Vice President in the U.S., bears Jamaican heritage, adding that her victory is a monumental accomplishment for women all over the world. Also, Holness said he looks forward to working with the Biden administration. In Montreal, Canadians reacted to the Democrats' victory. I think he may have a slightly less abrasive approach on the international side. He may be more careful to restore the relations that the United States had with its allies, especially in Europe and even with Canada. I think that the kind of comments about other foreign leaders we saw on Donald Trump's Twitter will not be seen anymore. I think the diplomatic relations between Trudeau and Biden were already good when Biden came as vice president. It can't be worse than what happened with Trump. No, on the contrary, I think it's going to be a big plus. So let's learn more about Biden's political career. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., better known as Joe Biden, was born in the United States in the state of Pennsylvania. Biden is a 77-year-old U.S. lawyer and politician and member of the Democratic Party, who has served in different government posts. In 1970, Biden was elected to the new Castle County Council, a position he held for two years. Uh, relating to the act From 1973 to 2009, Biden served as a senator for the state of Delaware, specializing in issues such as organized crime, drug trafficking, and civil rights. From 1987 to 1995, Biden chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee, leading the effort to pass the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, referred to as the Biden Crime Law, in 1994, which established 60 new offenses punishable by debt. In 2001, Biden headed the Senate's Foreign Relations Committee. In October 2002, he voted in favor of the resolution authorizing the U.S. government to use military force against Iraq. Talk about our bromance. On August 23, 2008, Biden was presented as Barack Obama's running mate following their victory Biden was sworn in as Vice President of the United States on January 20th, 2009, a position he held until 2017. In April 2019, Biden announced his presidential candidacy for the 2020 elections, representing the Democratic Party. In August 2020, he announced that Kamala Harris had been chosen as his running mate. But President Donald Trump has not conceded defeat and has vowed to fight the results. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, says the Trump campaign will bring lawsuits on this topic next week. Have a situation that is extremely, extremely troubling, first of all for the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and then for a num number of other states. The, these these uh, lawsuits will be brought starting on Monday. First of all, obviously, he's not, he's not going to concede when at least 600,000 ballots are in question. Uh, it's not my job to determine if the ballots are right or not. It's their job. But with a mail-in ballot or an absentee ballot, the, the burden under law is on the party that's proposing it, which is why it has to be inspected. It's not my uh, – how, how, how can I possibly tell you there's fraud or no fraud? Joe Gloria, Registrar of Voters for Clark County, said Saturday the full vote count in Nevada is not expected until Wednesday, November 11th. The next step, and I have communicated with the Secretary of State's office, and they have confirmed that they're going to be asking us for our first report on all voters who voted in Clark County individually, whether it be early voting, election day, or through the mail, to them on Monday. And what the Secretary of State needs to do with that is compare it with the other 16 counties in the state of Nevada to make sure that we don't have any duplicates in those that we voted provisionally or that anybody has done anything illegal by voting in two different counties. Once they run that review, they'll send that information back to us on anybody whose ballot shouldn't be counted, and we'll begin to, in an automated fashion, begin to roll in those provisional votes, which probably won't be 
any earlier than Wednesday of next week. We have more stories coming up. Don't go away. back. Let's continue with news. And Bolivia's president-elect Luis Arce is being sworn in at this moment in the city of La Paz. Let's look at some live images of Bolivia, where the 57-year-old Arce is being sworn in during a ceremony with the attendance of heads of state from Argentina, Paraguay, Colombia, and Spain, as well as senior officials from Chile, Iran, and from the government of Venezuela's Nicolás Maduro. Arce served as economy minister under former president Evo Morales, who is set to return to Bolivia after living in exile in Argentina since being ousted in last year's military coup. And in the morning of his inauguration, Arce took to Twitter to thank indigenous Amauta shamans and mamatayas, or women leaders, for preparing an early morning ceremony. In it, they prepared offerings for the Mother Earth asking her to bless Arce's presidency. And for an update, we go to a correspondent in La Paz, Camila Escalante. Today is the day this inauguration of Socialist President Luis Arce, which will take place later this morning, comes nearly one year after the coup against the government of President Evo Morales. During this coup period, the people have experienced immediate violence by coup forces, including repression, which was unleashed during the taking of power. We saw massacres in Sankata and Sacaba, persecution and a siege on mass government officials of the government of Evo Morales and social movement leaders. The people then saw the dismantling and fall of the country's economy deepened by the COVID-19 pandemic. There have been countless cases of human rights violations widely documented, many acts of corruption, and the entire process was approved by and supported by Washington OAS and right-wing allies. The elections were suspended and rescheduled on multiple occasions. At one point this year, it seemed as if we would never see elections carried out, and it took a mass mobilization by the popular movements across the country to force the 12-month coup dictatorship into holding elections. Evo Morales won the 2019 elections in the first round in a vote and process which was clean, transparent, and adequate. The the October 18th elections confirmed this win, and the people came back not only to win back power by the ballot, but they extended the victory and the mandate of the movement party instrument, winning the majority in, for the office of president, winning the majority in both houses, despite threats which will surely continue by sectors of the extremist right and fascist, to be sure, Luis Arce and David Chocahuanca will take office today in the official ceremony. World leaders arrived yesterday and overnight, and social movements have been traveling here from all across the country. Faced with threats by those who want to execute yet another coup, social movements and unions have organized to guarantee security for today's event. That was our correspondent, Camila Escalante, with an earlier report on what's happening in Bolivia. And we'll continue reporting on that as the day goes. And in other news, ETA is moving through the Caribbean, and it is expected that in the next few hours, given its displacement speed, it will approach the seas south of Cuba to enter the country through the central region by Sunday morning. Several reports from meteorological stations in the center of the island reports rainfalls in the province of Camagüey, Santa Clara, Santi Espíritu, San Cienfuegos. During the last hours, ETA has continued to gain in intensity. Its maximum sustained winds have increased to 95 kilometers per hour. In the next 12 to 24 hours, ETA will maintain a similar course of speed. Experts forecast a gradual intensification of the system while it approaches the Cuban territory. There will be increasing rains in a great part of the archipelago, which can be intense, mainly in mountainous area and in the southern coast. And Hurricane Eta has gone through Central America, leaving death and destruction in its wake, since it first rocked Nicaragua as a Category 4 hurricane. In Panama, the damage was concentrated in the province of Chiriquí, on the border with Costa Rica, where eight people have died so far and 68 are missing, according to a latest report by the Security Ministry. Rescue workers tirelessly lift the wounded from a landslide in Bambito, Panama. 
In Honduras, rescue labor continues after Hurricane Eta hit Central America, now has been downgraded into a tropical depression. The Permanent Commission of Contingencies and other organizations are intensifying the search and evacuation efforts of citizens who have been trapped on roofs and trees for more than two days due to flooding caused by the hurricane. Authorities report damages to infrastructure, collapsed bridges and damaged roads. The latest report confirms more than 30 deaths. We're taking one last break. Stay with us. Thank you for joining us again. And now let's go to live images in Bolivia as we are looking at the president-elect Luis Arce, who has already been uh, inaugurated as the president, the legitimate president, constitutional president of Bolivia. We are looking at images from uh, the, music, the musical part of the ceremony, and then we are seeing this is Luis Arce, the president of Bolivia, who he is right now singing the national anthem of Bolivia, uh, followed by, of course, his supporters and other members of Congress and uh, authorities of different countries. We are also seeing images of the flag of Bolivia and the flag of the indigenous um, nationalities in Bolivia as well, the Huipala. I will continue reporting on that throughout the day. Now let's turn to other news. Guinea's constitutional court on Saturday declared incumbent Alpha Conde had been re-elected for a third term as president at the age of 82. With 59.5%, Conde's support was above the absolute majority needed to win in the first round. Throwing out challenges to the October 18th ballot from figures including his main opponent, Celo Dalen Diallo. Diallo received 33.5% of the vote, according to the official count. Guinea's vote was held after a new constitution bypassed a two-term presidential limit and was followed by violence by the opposition, and which says it has led to 46 fatalities. There is no way for Conde's opponents to appeal this constitutional court decision, leaving the path formally clear for the president to begin a new six-year term with the option for a second under the new constitution introduced in March. Declares all appeals unfounded. Declares the ballot of October 18, 2020 regular. Says that Mr. Alpha Conde, candidate for RPG, Ark and Cell, received 2,438,815 votes, or 59.50% higher than the absolute majority. Therefore declares that Mr. Alpha Conde is elected in the first round of the presidential election of October 18, President of the Republic of Guinea. On Saturday, French authorities paid tribute to the three victims killed in a knife attack at a church in the southern French city of Nice. Need we remind you here and in front of you that this terrible attack on 14 July 2016 left 86 people dead and 458 injured that day. It is France that is always the target of terrorism, but Nice has paid a heavy price. Thousands of people have protested in the Senegalese capital, Dakar, against French President Emmanuel Macron's defense of the right to publish cartoons of Prophet Mohammed. The angry protesters burned French flags and pictures of Macron. They also called for the boycott of French products. Protests flared up in a number of Muslim-majority countries following Macron's speech in which he defended the right to satirize religion. The speech was delivered at the funeral of a teacher who was beheaded by a suspected Islamist after showing cartoons of Prophet Muhammad during a civics class. Strict interpretations of Islam forbid making any images of Muhammad. This is not to say that we are against France or anyone else. We just want our fellow citizens, Muslims like us, 
to have the right to be able to practice their religion in peace. We mustn't scare people, make them believe that it's a religion of terror, wickedness, or whatever to push them to their limits. No, that is not it. In fact, there is nothing more peaceful than Islam. The United Nations is warning that more than 9 million people in Ethiopia and the Tigray region are at risk of displacement due to the ongoing fighting between government forces and the Tigray People Liberation Front. The government of Abiy Ahmed launched military operations in Tigray on Wednesday after the Prime Minister accused the TPLF leaders of attacking a military camp in the region and attempting to loot military assets. Experts are warning of a potential civil war that could destabilize the country of 110 million people. Meanwhile, Ethiopian lawmakers on Saturday voted to replace the Tigray regional government. According to state television, the upper house of parliament passed a motion to abolish the existing illegal regional assembly and executive. It also approved a decision to establish a caretaker administration that will govern the region until a new government is put in place. And now we turn to other uh, topics in our show today. People in four food insecurity hotspots in parts of Burkina Faso, northeastern Nigeria, South Sudan, and Yemen need help urgently to avoid sliding into famine, UN humanitarians said on Friday at a press conference in Geneva. Blaming long-running conflicts and a lack of humanitarian access to communities in need, climate extremes, and the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Food Program warned that 16 additional countries also face a major food emergency or series of emergencies in the next three to six months. At-risk nations include Afghanistan, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where 22 million people are acutely food insecure, the highest number ever registered for a single country, and Haiti. Among the 20 hotspots uh, that I just mentioned, um, there are four where we are concerned that they may be facing an elevated risk of famine if the situation would further deteriorate over the coming months. And these are Burkina Faso in the Sahel region, uh, northeastern Nigeria, South Sudan, and Yemen. Burkina Faso, we know that there is insurgence in the northern part of the country. The same with northeastern Nigeria, the same with South Sudan. It's a conflict that is for decades. People have lost assets. People have lost their capability to cope with any shocks. We had one of the unprecedented um, floods uh, this year in uh, that, that, I mean, flood waters were submerging whole towns. People are struggling. Uh, the harvest that was just about to come in in South Sudan. The rollout of 5G networks is nowhere near complete, but China is already looking ahead to what comes next. The Asian power this week successfully launched the world's first 6G satellite into space to test the technology. The experimental satellite containing sixth-generation telecommunications technology was launched into Earth's orbit from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in China's northern Shanxi province on Friday. The satellite was ferried to space along with 12 other satellites on board along March 6 carrier rocket. The cutting edge satellite is named after the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China and will be used to verify the performance of the 6G frequency band in space. And we leave you with some images from Bolivia, the live inauguration of Luis Arce, the next president of Bolivia. We are looking at images of David Chopehuanca, also his vice president. With the permiso of nuestro patujú, de nuestro arco iris, de nuestra sagrada hoja de coca. And with that, we end this news brief. But remember, you can find all of our stories, including the Bolivia swearing in ceremony, on our website at telesurenglish.net. And be sure to also follow us on social media. Until next time.